Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Let's get absolutely weird in today's video. We're going to be looking at the oldest photographs of Aleppo, Syria. The images are dated from the earliest known photographs taken in the area in the 1840s through the early 1930s. I discovered these images by researching the ancient and most advanced citadels found around the world, tying my last video on Haiti to today's. The citadel in Aleppo is what truly shapes the city, both metaphorically and literally. But let's get into this absolutely ridiculous current narrative, and as we'll come to see, nothing in Aleppo's history seems to give credit to one specific group for any of this architecture. It's all an amalgamation, thousands upon thousands of years of destruction and rebuild. The ancient tell, the immense mound, the red bricks that shape it, and the rest of the city, fortified seemingly before the history in the area was first recorded. But I digress. Let's see what the current narrative has to say. Aleppo is the capital city of the Aleppo province in Syria, Syria's most populated province. The city of Aleppo currently is home to nearly 2,100,000 residents. Aleppo is considered to be one of the oldest continuously occupied cities in the world, much older than Damascus, with excavations at Tel Asada and Tel Al Ansari in the south of Aleppo, revealing human evidence here since the 6th millennium BC. The Amorites, or Emery, occupied Aleppo by the 3rd millennium BC, as described on the Ebla tablets. The Emery, a Semitic speaking people, occupied much of the Middle East, including Mesopotamia, from the 21st century BC through roughly the 16th century BC. According to biblical text, the Emery, or Amorites, are considered progenitors of the Canaanites, and the Emery also founded Babylon, amongst hundreds of other cities, raising it from a small town to one of the most powerful states in the world. The Ebla tablets, for reference, are cuneiform tablets found in Tel Marduk, or the Mound of Marduk, located roughly 34 miles southwest of Aleppo. Ebla was one of the earliest kingdoms of Syria, becoming a trade center by the 3rd millennium BC. It was destroyed multiple times before the Amorites arrived from Aleppo and rebuilt the Ebla kingdom, leaving behind evidence in hundreds of these tablets. This is during a time in Syria known as the Archive Period. The Amorites then based their new kingdom, called Yamat, around Aleppo, calling the city Halab. However, by the 16th century BC, the Yamat dynasty was nearly obliterated by the Hittites, who subsequently destroyed and rebuilt Aleppo. The Hittites fought strenuous battles using the forces found in Aleppo, including against Ramses the Great at the Battle of Kadesh. Many of the ancient structures in the old city of Aleppo can be tied back directly to the Hittite roots. And this is due, in part, to Aleppo being the cultic center for worship of the Hittite primary deity, the storm god, Tarhun. This primary deity of the Hittite people is depicted standing on a bull, or with a bull's horns, or represented by the bull, the divine male energy. Tarhun also holds three lightning bolts and a double-headed axe or fasci, and his main legend describes his defeating of the time serpent or dragon. When the Hittite Empire lost control of Aleppo, the ancient traditions of Tarhun worship, as well as the Hittite architecture itself, was absorbed first by the Assyrians and most directly by the Phrygians. It's concluded that the massive mound on which Aleppo is built and the subsequent citadel had its foundations laid sometime during this period. Interestingly, a statue was discovered in 2003 within the citadel dating to roughly 1000 BC. This statue indicates the foundations of the citadel in part were constructed by Tai Tai, King of Palestine. Hittologist John David Hawkins concludes that ancient Aleppo, Palestine and modern Palestine are in fact one and the same with the ancient kingdom of Palestine, which reached Aleppo, being that of the mysterious sea people who conquered many parts of the Middle East during this portion of history. From the Hittite architecture and massive fortifications, we have the Neo-Assyrians taking control of Aleppo 
in the 8th century BC. This is followed by a period of control by the Chaldean Empire and then the first Persian Empire. Aleppo remained an important city of trade, as well as a massively fortified city, one of the largest in the world. However, the history goes dormant from the first Persian Empire through roughly 333 BC, when Alexander the Great conquers Aleppo. Special treatment was put on converting Aleppo into a Hellenistic community following Alexander's conquest. And so many of the already ancient Hittite structures were renovated at this time. Aleppo thrived for a short period as a Hellenistic stronghold. However, Aleppo was conquered in 88 BC by Tigrans the Great, becoming part of the Armenian Empire. Aleppo changed hands again when Rome defeated Armenian forces, and thus Aleppo came under the rule of Pompey of Rome. As a Roman-controlled city through BC times, Aleppo gained much infamy, with a vastly growing population which continued well into the 5th century AD under Byzantine control. Amongst these structures is the supposed 5th century church of St. Simeon Stylites. I've made a video on this previously, which I highly recommend you watch, but a stylite is a Christian saint who lived on a pillar during the Byzantine Empire. In layman's terms, a stylite was a devout worshipper who would find a ruined structure, often of significant architecture, and climb atop the tallest or most secluded pillar of that ruined structure and live there for the rest of their lives, fasting and preaching daily. This tradition was started by St. Simeon Stylites, who first sought seclusion in the forest and then in a mountain range. And after surviving Lent, with no food or water, he became infamous. As the story goes, Simeon searched for places to preach which could test his fortitude, as the mountains did, and thus, he decided to make his home on a three-foot square platform atop an ancient ruined pillar in Syria. The church of St. Simeon Stylites in Aleppo was constructed in the 5th century atop and around his ancient pillar home, itself a pillar ruin of an earlier Hittite pagan construction. After this, the history of Aleppo becomes so convoluted it's hard to make any sense of what is written, but let's try. Aleppo becomes part of Roman Syria Prima when multiple Roman Catholic bishops rise to power in the city. However, this loosely based system of control leads to much controversy with no distinct periods of peace amongst the clergy in the city. By 540 AD, the I of the Sassanian Empire sacks and burns down Aleppo, but he does not stay. The city remains in relative tatters until 637 when it's taken control by the Muslim conquest and Aleppo is lavishly rebuilt throughout the years that follow. It becomes a center of science and the arts, one of the most important to the Muslim world. The Seljuk Amir Tatush I launched a conquest to capture Aleppo in 1077, which lasted for roughly three years. In 1086, Sultan Malik Shah I arrived to Aleppo, eventually reaching an agreement with the Seljuk Empire to appoint a Seljuk governor in Aleppo while still under rule of the Sultan. This peace was short-lived, however, as Aleppo was besieged during the Crusades. Led by the King of Jerusalem, Baldwin II, the Crusaders failed to breach Aleppo or the citadel's massive fortified walls. By 1128, Aleppo was named capital of the rapidly growing Zenjid dynasty, a cadet dynasty of the earlier Seljuk Empire. Ten years later, in 1138, under the Byzantine Emperor John II, a new crusade was ordered, its purpose to capture Aleppo. Aleppo withstood this bombardment and was considered too massive, too well built to be conquered. However, the unimaginable occurred later that same year. In 1138, after failing to fall to the crusaders, Aleppo was destroyed almost entirely when an earthquake ravaged the city. This earthquake, considered to be the sixth largest in human history, took the lives of over 200,000 people in Aleppo and reduced the ancient impenetrable structure to rubble. 
In 1183, Aleppo was rebuilding under the Ayyubid dynasty, who controlled the area until January the 24th, 1260, when Aleppo was taken by an alliance of the Mongols and the Frankish. It's written that the outer walls of the fort, as well as the inner walls and the citadel, were all destroyed at this time. Every group in Aleppo, besides the Roman Catholics, are said to have lost their lives in the subsequent takeover. That same year, 1260, in September, the Mamluk Empire of Egypt negotiated a miraculous deal with the Frankish forces to allow the Mamluks to sneak into Aleppo to challenge the newly established Mongol forces. The Mamluk Empire of Egypt was an empire built around the military class known as the Mamluk, the former slave soldiers of Egypt. The Mamluk were comprised mainly of Indo-Aryan Turkish and Circassian troops, with their flag being the Golden Lion. The Mamluk Empire routed the Christian Mongol leader, delivering a key blow that halted the immediate Mongol advancement. The Mamluks ruled Aleppo from Cairo, however, and this led to numerous attacks by the Mongols in the decades that followed. The Circassian and Turkish Mamluks ruling Aleppo from Egypt were eventually defeated by an advanced Mongol army in the year 1299. This Mongol army, which conquered Aleppo, was led by their Khan, Ghazan, followed by the Armenian king, Hethum II, and the Mongols also had hired the services of the Knights Templar and the Knights of St. John of Jerusalem. The history, again, goes dormant for more than 100 years following this siege, until the year 1400, when it's implied Aleppo is back in the hands of the Muslim Seljuk dynasty. In this year, 1400, is when historical powerhouse Tamerlan is said to have set his proverbial fist upon Aleppo. Tamerlan essentially destroyed the city, reduced it to rubble, going as far as ordering the construction of a massive watchtower built out of skulls to sit directly outside the city as a reminder of his power. This skull tower not only was infamous during its time, but it was said to have been built using over 20,000 human craniums. When the Mongols moved on from Aleppo, we're told the Muslim community freely returned to the city, however many of the Christians never returned. Aleppo became part of the Ottoman Empire in 1516 as part of a vast expansion by Selim I. Aleppo then grew rapidly through the 16th, 17th, and early 18th centuries, being the trade capital for the Ottoman Empire with Europe, even exceeding the trade of Damascus. During this time, nearly every major European nation opened a consulate in Aleppo to directly influence this trade. By the 19th century, however, Aleppo began to decline as conditions warranted less agricultural success in the area, while the discovery of the New World led to shifts in what was desired by the high societies of Europe and the rest of the world. Essentially, the New World replaced the immense trade of the Middle East, leading to ancient cities like Aleppo seemingly drying up overnight. This issue was only extrapolated by the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869, which effectively was the last nail in the coffin driving trade and growth away from Aleppo. As we come into more modern times, after the year 1870, we have history which we need not discuss in this historical video. We have many years of insecurities, infighting, deliberate destruction, questionable narratives, the covering over of history, and heinous acts of war, which have basically reduced Aleppo to rubble in the last century and a half. Our focus today, however, was the ancient and most important city of Aleppo, a city which has made its impact throughout the last 10,000 years, leaving us with layers upon layers, brick upon brick, of convoluted history which does little to quell our thirst for answers when we consider this architecture and this narrative. What do you think about the accepted history of Aleppo? I've tried to only touch on the key aspects of the ancient narrative, giving you names and topics for future study, while allowing you some space to view these photographs and conceive your own hypothesis. I'd love to hear what you've concluded down below, 
let me know what stood out to you the most about this history of Aleppo. How ancient is this city really? From the time of the first men, then from Marduk to the Phrygians, from the Greeks to the Romans, to the Sea People, to the Chaldeans, to the Proto-Persians, they all lived in Aleppo at one point or another, seemingly adding to this architecture. But who truly created, who founded, who built this masterpiece?